Greeting subscribers and other curious persons. <coughs> Got a bit of a cold today, so today's video will be brought to you by Willpower and a proprietary brand of cold remedy. Oh, <coughs> welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. And this week's topic is, what do you think of required reading in school? Simple answer, I'm strongly in favour of it. School is about, for me, turning out people who are better than if they hadn't gone to school. It's about giving children the opportunity to have more of what is available. To have more options, to have more self-esteem, to have more empathy, to be better. And so you teach a certain baseline in things. Maths, physics, chemistry, sciences and so forth for understanding how to break down a question of a physical nature, to create a basic understanding of how machinery works, how a light bulb works, all of the things that can form a sound basis for personal preference in the future. But they sound basis there. And similarly, history, English, art, teach the more psychological, philosophical parts of what it is to have meaning, to have a worthwhile existence within the structural mechanistic framework that you've learnt in physics, maths and so on. So again, a basic baseline in what it is to be human and how you might go about expanding your humanness in a direction that you choose later in life. And so what do I think of required reading in schools is to me the same question as what do I think of required multiplication in schools? To, if you are teaching maths, you don't say, well, we're gonna give children a choice of learning division or just learning addition because addition is easier for them to understand whereas division well they might not enjoy it so we'll give them the choice to not do it in maths you have to learn the basics and you don't know until you've done them what those basics are whether you'll enjoy them so in history, in art, in English, in the arts, soft sciences, and so on, required reading. There are certain books that will give a perspective that people don't have. Books from the 18th century are almost certainly going to give a perspective that 21st century children don't have. Similarly, books from other countries, books written by women, books written by men. As I've said before, each book is another perspective on what it might mean to be human, what it's like to experience the world slightly differently. And so going forward sort of it towards the end of school, children who choose to study English might have set texts, whereas children who choose to not study English don't have those set texts to read. Similarly, higher level English qualifications might have the class agreeing to study two of the four books on the syllabus because you don't have to study all of them for the exam. But to begin with, there is a baseline, exactly the same as maths, science, engineering, sport, all of the things where you do it because there is a benefit 
in having done it, English is the same. Read some books because until you've read them, you haven't experienced those perspectives. So you don't know if you're going to like them. I mean, potentially you won't. There's a anecdote about Japanese food when Japanese food was first introduced to the United Kingdom because it was so different from British food people didn't like it they had to develop an acquired taste because it was so different but now people like Japanese food because it's common so you need, when you're a child, to be exposed to things that you're not comfortable with. To do things that you don't choose voluntarily with your whole heart to do. Not because of some insipid, it teaches you what the real world's like, bitter, cynical justification. But because you don't have the perspective to know what you're turning down. School has to have a mandatory aspect to it because the people who are making the choice have to be the people who have the best experience in taking a proto-human being and giving them the framework they need. So when you're at the framework stage, you have to be exposed to things that you have not chosen to do. And recommended reading does that for the more spiritual side in the same way that learning how to do long division, despite having a calculator that can do it, teaches you the structural rigour that you'll need. So required reading drops away as you get further through school and becomes less of a necessity because you've got more of a framework to make valid decisions about future books based on your past experience. But the younger you are, the less experience you have. So it's right and proper that the people whose job it is to educate have control over what they are exposing you to, rather than it being entirely your choice. Is, is anyone brave enough to put in the comments that, given utter free choice to do whatever they wanted to at school, they would have actually have chosen to do the hard but necessary things without any external pressure at all? Or... Are we really all here because our teachers pushed us to be a little bit better than sitting there being self-centred because we didn't know any different? <clears throat> and so I'm going to cut it short there because my throat's starting to feel like I'm eating sandpaper. But uh, if you like recommended reading or you don't think recommended reading has any purpose then let me know. Toodaloo!